Hey, Thrive here, and I'm back with the uh, Damascus sword, the Viking Damascus sword from Hillside Forge. Uh, Murphy's Musket uh, did a review on this exact same sword, I guess about three or four months ago, and we had not seen it until we came out with our uh, Type 6 uh, Hillside Forge uh, Type 6 uh, pattern welding plate. The difference in this one and this one is this one's actually folded more times. So you have more layers and it's a little more intricate. Uh, we can tell for sure this is a full tank because it's a wooden handle. We've easily tested it to prove that. I mean, we've actually checked it with a magnet. We, we can tell by the construction that this is painted on. So there's no reason why this wouldn't be gone. There's even pictures showing the full tank online. This sword. Uh, we noticed this sword. We haven't been able to get a hold of the manufacturer. It does not say it has a full tank. Uh, we assumed it did because it never came apart in any of our tests. Neither has our uh, late century Viking sword or Norman sword come apart in any video. We've used these extremely, I mean, relentlessly uh, after the original videos of evaluation from an evil shop. But he does not ask for destruction tests. Uh, he gives parameters where, like, he would, if I said I was going to chop a tree down with it, he'd probably say no. So I'm going to be honest with you. He asked us to use them with respect. So I don't think it has anything to do with him thinking they're faulty. I think it's because he doesn't want to see us destroy blades. That is what he's sending us as our payment for the actual video. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do the exact same test for Murphy's musket. I've got a log set up here. We're going to test all three swords and see how they hand up, handle uh, chopping. Uh, I mean, this thing is held so well, I'll be surprised if it unscrews. I mean, I, after seeing it, I'm not calling Murphy a liar. I believe it's very possible that... It's the same way, and we didn't know it because it seems like an all steel construction or all metal construction is really tightly put together. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'll just start by throwing some uh, light shots and work my way up to the sword. And With see the it wire goes. handled uh, sword, that's the first yeah, one. Yeah, this is the this is the uh, Hillside Forge Damascus Viking sword with a Type S handle. If you watch our videos, all our testing, it's never uh, even bent in the handle or loosened in any way. So that's why I'm really curious what's going to happen. Oh. Oh, the one's weaker there than the rest. Oh, went straight in beautifully. I'll hit a little harder and get a little harder. No bending. Noticing it loosen up any, might have a small bend maybe. We're approaching the five minute mark and you've been going five minutes chopping away with that and yeah. it still hasn't done anything. It hasn't loosened, it hasn't wow. hadn't bent. Nope. Okay. okay, this is the late century Viking sword from Medieval Shop. Or the Brazil nut uh, uh, Norman sword is basically what it is. It looks a lot like an old fur. 
design of the blade, everything, very much so. We're gonna try chopping for five minutes. We chopped five minutes into this log. Some of the area of the log's not quite as tough as other areas, but we chopped for over five minutes without any total reasonable, I mean, anything we could see that looked like it was unnatural for a sword doing that for all the time. That's not proving that it's got a full tang, but it's proves whatever about our sword, it's not coming apart. So anyway, let's go ahead and try this one. The only thing I've noticed is this has been loose for a very long time, very, very slightly, and that's a common problem with uh, cross guards. That's happened to me using this thing over the years now. So the first sword you ever received, that can be fixed, but nothing else seems to be loose whatsoever. All right, this is the Hillside Forge uh, Type 6 pattern welded blade from Medieval Shop. Uh, this one we are almost 100% certain is a full tank. I've used a magnet on it, which it proves the tang has to go to here. This is a wooden uh, uh, handle. So uh, from our best belief, it is pink. So let's go ahead and get started and try this out. We're going to chop for five minutes with this one as well and see how it falls. Hard to bend. It's all rock. This would perform marvelously. Yeah. That was five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, we're back from our test on our stump. We had a pretty good stump out there to chop on. We chopped it to uh, ribbons almost. Uh, we just kept chopping and chopping and chopping. I never had the handle loosen up on the sword. Now, does that mean that it's not uh, a screw on pommel and that it has a stick or rat tail style tang? No, we we're gonna test that in a second and check it out. But it didn't seem to do much, but it did kind of bend a little. I noticed just a little bend offline. Not much, but a little. So I kind of see what he meant there. I don't know how he got the, that kind of stress at Murphy's uh, Murphy's musket muskets. Uh, I don't know how he got that kind of stress from the tatami. But if the sharp edge was not sharp enough, which I sharpen these myself, I'm going to be honest. They don't usually come in razor sharp where you can just shave hair and cut paper and so on. I put an edge comparable to a katana, able to cut that kind of material before I cut like poor man's tatami or rolled wet newspaper. And this sword itself here actually cut through extremely thick rolls and our analog ballistics gel heads. Our analog ballistics gel heads are made with coconuts, they're made with heavy ballistics gel, and they're made with PVC pipe set in a, in a, uh, our uh, Pell in such a way that they give, they move. So the whole thing there is what I'm saying is, yes, under those circumstances, I think it's as hard to cut into as a human head. We get results that look very much like early period migrational swords and Viking swords and what they've done to skulls and how they cut pieces off. So it's so, so close in replication to what we see in forensics. I believe, yes, the heads and what we know about the materials are equivalent. So if the sword survives that, it survives cutting our, our tatami. Uh, it survives other little tests that we throw in. I mean, we probably shouldn't because actually Medieval Shop wants us not to disrespect their blades. And uh, to be honest with you, I've disrespected lots of blades in a way. Uh, in, in lots of people's minds. I've cut uh, rings out of sealed mail with this sword here. This is the late century Norman sword uh, or late century Viking sword from Medieval Shop. The only thing I've had happen with the sword over a long time, I've had this over a year or two now, I haven't about a year, I'm not sure, but I, it's a little rattle in the, uh, the uh, cross guard or the quillions. The handle has not loosened up from the blade at all in any way. This apparently does not unscrew in any kind of way that I know of. And I can even see a discoloration here where I believe it's paint, but I'm not 100% sure. But it does not, it's not separate. And it's never bent that I know of one way or the other. It's stayed the same that I can tell. So this sword's cut through, uh, this sword's cut through uh, 20 gauge steel with just the tip shots. Uh, it's cut through heavy plastics. It's cut through uh, heavy gambeson with tip shots. Uh, I mean, I've done so much with this and cut more than one head with it and so many things that I've done. I can't picture this one in any way having any Cut through uh, metal like the Viking Sword Challenge, the Samurai Sword Challenge? Oh yes, it has. And, and uh, I've got a magnet here, and one of the ways I check for full tangs is I'll put a magnet against it and see how it uh, it rests on the blade. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to show you here. You can see where the, oh, this magnet's not very good. But you can feel the tang inside the sword. You can actually, I don't know how to explain it, but you can feel the metal where it encompasses. You can feel the magnetic pull of the steel on the magnet. Yes, and this is a wooden handle. The problem with our other sword here, uh, if you get it out, I'll put this one back up, we have a steel wrapping of some sort, possibly, in copper for the wire wrapped handle, and we have metal underneath it. So this sticks on here fine. So if I was sitting here and you're trying to say, is this a full tang, I would say, be a full tank. It's very possible. But it could be our metal handle and our wrapping, so there's no way I can say for sure that way. Something like our uh, Type 6 pattern welded, not only do we have pictures that prove online it's a full tank and you can tell it's a different sword, it's even welded differently. The sword is totally, uh, the pattern is, is more intricate, meaning it's been folded more times to get that pattern. But this one's a wooden handle, and you can see wherever you put this magnet, no matter what, it sticks, and that is not metal under there. I'm willing to uh, see if I can get this down here and show you. I will glue this back, but I'm going to pull this back to let everybody see that that's wood. I'm sorry, I'm tearing up my handle because it's a leather wrap that's glued on. It's not stitched, but that has well, to. You gotta move cool. your fingers long enough for us to see the, oh, the sorry. magnet. Oh, sorry. What I'm saying. And your shirt's black. Oh, sorry. So the magnet doesn't show very well. You can tell all the way around that's wood. We gotta move your fingers long enough for us to see it. Oh, sorry. Even in the widest part of the wood, you're still hitting that. Don't move it in front of your black shirt. We can't see. 
Okay. Trying my best. Sorry, it's a little black magnet. But this one is a full tank. This one, nothing. I felt nothing jiggle, nothing wiggle, nothing anything. I'm going to glue this back when we get done here. Nothing of any kind. It is solid as can be, and I chopped for over five minutes and deeper than any of the other swords, and the blade did not seem to bend easily at all. I mean, this is a very solid blade. Now, if it has to do with the way it was forged, uh, the folding, I don't, don't really think that would have anything to do with it, but it's just it's held up so well, I'm impressed. And I can tell by looking at it, we both can, if you check back here, some of them aren't ground off and some are. It's hard to see here, but there's two pinged places for this piece. This piece is pinged on. And that's normally the way that's done. This is pinged on over this being pinged through. And this is hollowed out slightly to cover the pin mark on the top. I have no doubt that's the way this is constructed. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind at all whatsoever. But now as we get back to the other swords, uh, both these swords, we haven't done the... Uh, Roll what to Tommy with this one yet? We will. We'll come back and do that. We'll do some bottles and stuff that, uh, believe it or not, our sponsor loves to see the bottles. He loves to see the splash and the colored water and stuff like that, and, and possibly some meat. We'll come back with that. Do that. It's going to perform well, I can tell you already, just like our other sword. But this sword here, like we said, we're not sure what's in here. I have no doubt that Murphy's Muskets is 100% uh, correct when he says. I'm going to see if I can actually get this to loosen up. See if it, I mean, it should be righty tighty lefty loosey, right? That, that would be my assumption. And I'd like to add a few things about our sponsorship for Medieval Shop. Uh, a lot of people think that we get paid by Medieval Shop. No, there is no. no exchange of money. We do not get any monetary sponsorship. No, not we, whatsoever. We this, are, is our, this is our payment. When we receive something like this, the sword, uh, I claimed this one when I got it. Me and El uh, picked something out of the box. And I claimed this one because I thought it was beautiful. And I thought right. it would help me with the videos for Roland Moore's Echo. But I'd also like to continue by saying that we're trying to build up an arsenal here so that we can make historical videos. And if we want to do something like, say, the Rob Roy video we want to do someday, uh, you know, we want things in our stockpile where we can be in garb and have all the gear that we want to recreate that. If we want to do a real Viking versus Samurai scenario, we really want to have all the gear, to have armor for both, to have weapons for both, to be able to test for both, Try not to damn and be able to have reenactment versions too so we can actually fight each other and show people how these things would play out. So that's why our sponsorship is not monetary and we get the items. We don't destroy them for that reason. It's because we want to continue to use them. As you can see, might Brandon's be bending, but I don't know so. if I'm tearing this thing up. Hopefully this is not a full tang, and I am cranking it off. It did move. It moved, yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying I'm hoping I'm not tearing up something that's a decent three-quarter tang or something. That's not really a rat tail this or a is, rod. This is this is not acting too. This is Thran really. There you go. There you go. You're getting it. It's turning. You're it is threaded. It. I guarantee you that won't work on the other swords. No, I, you'd break something doing that on the other. Yeah, and I think I hurt myself doing it, getting this one off. But it is turning. It is turning. Yeah, it looks like Murphy's muskets might be right. Yeah, curious what we have inside here. I try not to damage this, but I'm at the point where I'm so frustrated over the situation because we normally don't get, I shouldn't say had, but we don't have something that works so well and we assume something and then it doesn't, you know, there's something about it we don't know. We usually we, know. Yeah, we, we usually know. notice flaws right away. Ooh, and yeah. Perform, like, the hilt does not want to separate, though. It's still <laughs> So apparently they've used some kind of adhesive is what I'm seeing. That's why it took so long to get it looser and it didn't come apart on us in the video. I think it's been, it, they use some kind of glue, which I'm assuming, I mean, lots of people do that. They do that in India. They do that's that in Nepal. Uncommon. Huh? That's not at all uncommon. No, in, in India for the sham shears, and Matt Easton said it before, they glue the hilts on. So some companies might think this is acceptable. If it's not pinned for this century of sword, I don't consider it acceptable to have this screwed on and glued and considering it welded or something. Because uh, uh, I've asked about some swords, and I've heard that they say certain things are welded. Uh, that is welded right here. These are tack wells. This should have the same construction as our Type 6 and actually have rods that go through that are part of this, part of it, that are pinned to hold it on. That's what makes it extremely solid, the pinned pieces that go through and the full tang coming up through and being pinned. I'm sure that's the way that's constructed, but this one you can't tell can't see if it had been peened on here or not. It almost looks like it had been, like you can see a peen the way it's put together. But anyway, this, this handle here, I don't know if we're going to be able to see what the tang looks like or not. I can try, but... Yeah! Don't hurt yourself on that. 
I'll be honest with you, they must have. I don't think it's going to come off. They have I mean, I'm sorry, really but uh, Murphy, we're not saying that you're lying or anything, but I'm assuming what happened is yours didn't get the same treatment as the one that got sent to us, or we would have figured something was wrong with it. I just assume for the price that it probably would have been a full tank. But for ours, we're still not sure if it's a full tank because, yeah, they could have done a full tank and, you know, pretty full or something. You put a little piece on the back to screw on. But this is, if you look at this, it's filled up with stuff. There's, I can't tell what size it is or anything. I'm sorry. But uh, we apologize uh, if anybody bought it and were in the impression that it was a full tank and it's not. I don't believe we ever said it was, but we assumed it was. So. Right. And, and they have... Out. In 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 time, uh, it's been changed on the Amiable Shop website to re, to, to to show that it doesn't. They never say anything. They've taken the full tang off of Amiable Shop. I don't say. think it says it is no. No, not anymore. Uh, whereas this one does say it's full tang. It has pictures of it. Uh, it does on the medieval uh, uh, sword and so on. So anyway, I guess we're done with our video today. I can't. We'd like to thank off. Murphy's Muskets for bringing that to our attention. Uh, if he hadn't brought that to our attention this through his video. This is not up. It's like one piece. So. Anyway, uh, thank you, Murphy. Uh, I guess your name's Murphy over at Murphy's Muskets. I hope I got your name right from the uh, channel. Uh, we watch your channel regularly. I don't know how I missed that. Thank you so much for uh, letting us onto this. But, yes, it is a screw-on pummel, and we're unable to take ours apart. So, hope you all enjoyed the video, and we do apologize if there is any... Uh, confusion about this sword but I still think it held up very well like the old you can't take away the fact that it did what it did even with a rat tail tang and a screwed on pommel right I mean it's just like the old Vikings proverb that said uh, don't judge a woman till she's burned a sword till it's been used or a horse till it's been ridden uh, I know it sounds kind of cold but it means if the sword doesn't hold up in battle or the horse throws you and breaks your neck or the woman turns on you and has them kill you you won't know it until it's all over with so we didn't know until now, so thank you, Murphy, once again. Farvel. Farvel.